So I'm starting now. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed guests, teachers, principal, and uh, audience of the live stream, and everyone else joining us online. On behalf of National College, we, Aditi Prasai and Briksha Sharma, your host for today, cordially welcome you to the Graduate of the Month program. Now, before we move on to what to the program, I'd like our audience to know a little about what we're doing in this program. So now in uh, what we do in this program is we call upon graduates from National College who have had a marvelous journey during and after the college that has helped them progress and have made the entire college proud of them. Fortunately, today we have such an individual with us today. Now, without further any uh, delays, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Ms. Anushma Karil. She Hello. is a boss grad. She is a boss graduate of uh, 2018 and has pursued masters in sociology from JNU New Delhi. She has had a tremendous journey from being in, being a research intern in Martin Chautari to working as a learning support uh, uh, learning support for children with special needs. I think more specifically in the area of autism and attention deficit hyper. Uh, I'm sorry if I if I mistake uh, your specification, uh, hyperactive disorder. Well, congratulations for this uh, newly appointed job. I am pretty sure the entire college is proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Piksha. Now, we would, know, we would like to know more about you. I'm pretty sure our audiences are not uh, completely satisfied with this introduction because this introduction does no justice to what you are. So to know more about you, I would like to invite upon my friend uh, Aditi Prasai. For more fun segments, stay tuned and over this, uh, over, over to you, Aditi. Thank you, Briksha. Now, as per our introduction, I'd just like to ask some question to Anushma Aditi. So you've been a remarkable person throughout your journey in National College from winning a gold medal, being a gold medalist to being appointed a learning support for children with special need. Could you please give us a very short introduction about your new job to our audience? Firstly, thank you so much all for having me. It's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful honor to be here back to National College and to share my experience of National College with you all being an alumni. And uh, yeah, before I talk about my job, um, so I would like to sh start like this. Uh, before I give you, you know, what I do and what I'm going to do in British school as a learning support, uh, I want to give you a brief background of what National College have given me, them, which is the reason why I got selected for the, the given job. So there is this thing offered by Bachelors of Social Science in National College, which is uh, you need to do a bachelor's thesis. And now it sounds really hectic for us, you know, to come up with a thesis idea and then, you know, do a research. It's a very hectic thing, especially to do during your bachelor's. But uh, during my bachelor's thesis, what I did was I did a re research on ADHD. Especially I tried to fill a gap where there was a problem in assessing attention among kindergarten children. So while doing so, so what I did was come up with a method or a tool I designed in order to assess attention more effectively so that, you know, the teachers of kindergarten can actually uh, really assess the children's ability, you know, attention so that they can come across a new individualized technique to make a better curriculum so that they can effectively learn something. So while I was doing that research and while I was able to successfully design an assessment tool so that, you know, anyone in the school can replicate using similar methods, on the basis of that, I got this job of and then uh, what intrigued me was the fact that, you know, these kids who have autism, cerebral palsy, who have difficulty learning and learning and who have ADHD, who have, 
who are either hyperactive who, or who have no attention at all. So um, what was offered by British School was that there needs a support for children individually who have uh, difficulty, you know, paying attention uh, due to a several factors, like several conditions, special needs, like autism and cerebral palsy. So in these kids, it is important for us to assess them properly, observe them, observe their pattern, behavior attributes, and based on that, uh, you know, figure out the curriculum. So my responsibility responsibility uh, in a British school as a learning support is to provide this kind of support where I first observe and assess their attention skills, emergent literacy skills, and then based on those observations, I come up with a methodology or I, I design a curriculum uh, in interaction with an expert dealing with the special needs and then execute that curriculum so that there is an effective and productive, uh, you know, learning for those who need is the most. So this is what I'm going to do. This is briefly about uh, my job that is going to be in the British school in learning support. And yeah, that is. And before this, uh, yeah, my brief background would be that I did my uh, schooling from Ali and I did my A-levels from St. Xavier's and my real journey of academics started from St. Xavier's A-levels and then uh, my bachelor's from National College, you all know that, and a master's from JNU and now I'm going to work in British school, that is for, for now. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a very br brilliant uh, journey in British school as well. And how do, and another question I'd like to ask you is, how do you describe your journey in National College? Like uh, after being graduated from National, what are the key observations? What are the key points that you have taken for your life to go ahead and do something? Right, that, that's a really lovely question because I really feel, you know, uh, indebted towards National College for what I've become so far. Firstly, I mean, I have developed a lot of confidence in me and, the, the, you know, the credit really goes to National College. Be, uh, before I talk, um, you know, anything, you know, random about National College, let's just go into a process, a linear process. So I really uh, wanted to study. I, I really wanted to become a sociologist when I was doing my A-level. So there was this book uh, in A-level that I read you know, that was recommended by teachers. So I needed to read this Themes and Perspective of Sociology by Harry Lumbus in Holland. So that book really inspired me to you know, think about the society in a different way, in a different perspective. So that curiosity really sprung this, you know, that I need to be a sociologist someday. I want to really understand the world around me, social world around me. So by then, after the end of sociology, I knew what I would want to do. So I wanted to, you know, find um, so to find a course that, I, that can actually help me to develop this perspective to see the social world. So by doing that, you know, I was Googling these universities and colleges and then I googled National College and I came to National College. I, I really think that was the best day and the best decision I took because, you know, I came with my father into National College and Ritu Ma'am was there. She was like, you know, giving us the perspectives and there was this very new fascinating subject in social sciences. And you know, what made me really curious about uh, this uh, Bachelor's of Social Science course was these interdisciplinary subject that it offered. And that subject, you know, the, the choice of the subject didn't came out of, you know, the, the scope or what the, what the scope it will give me in the future. But it was more about my curiosity to learn about these things so that I can uh, look at the world from a better lens. So with that, I joined National College Bachelors of Social Science, which was a very good experience. It was more better because uh, the, the course was extremely very new. We were just, just the second batch. And, you know, the developing the courses went side by side along with uh, students uh, as a student uh, developing you know really working on the course it was also teachers who facilitated us so it was like in coordination with the faculties coordination with our teachers and coordination with our friends we really had uh, been able to explore these subjects which I believe now in your course it, it is more developed more refined because you have seen a lot of faculties and so far so uh, that actually helped me in uh, you know I would put in three different ways so first 
first thing I would say is I really wanted to become a researcher, especially in social sector. And I was like, you know, I had this question, you know, about the social world, why it, why it functions, how it does, you know, why society changes. So to all these questions that I have at, as a curious, as a researcher, it really helped me to develop a skill that a researcher needs. So for, for, for first thing that I would say is uh, the field trip. You know, everyone is attracted to National College for the same thing. So like National College, yeah, because we can travel a lot. So that's exactly the point. But, you know, as fun as it is to go to field, it is equally um, important and is, it is equally happening that these fun full field trips are accumulating in your mind every single field that you go in. So, you know, unconsciously and subconsciously, you have that, you know, experience in the field, communicating with people in communities around you. So, you know, you're developing the skill a researcher need because, you know, like in medical sciences, uh, the field for them might be an autopsy or maybe a patient, you know, they have to really, really execute uh, the, what, uh, what they're going to learn about the, to, to, the, to extract the knowledge. But for a social scientist, our field, our actual lab is a society and to be actually present there go there and communicate with these people and uh, the national you know the pa platform national calls provide us, us to actually go there it was really effective and when I went to JNU and then we were talking about the research and you know going to grassroots and coming up with better questionnaires to ask better questions I really had this better foundation from national college because I had experience with uh, this community mapping tools uh, and uh, experience with focus group discussion, everything we learn from National College. So it really helped me. And another second thing I would like to say that I learned from National College I mean, this is the best part, and that is bachelor's thesis. So it really sounds hectic. Oh my God, that's so tough to deal with. How can you say it's the favorite part? But you know, when at the end of the semester, like seven semester, you realize that everything that you've read now is actually going to be executed in the form of your work. So you start with a question, a sociological or anthropological question. You go looking for the answer in the field, and you come up with a solid report. And even the structures of a report, how to actually present a finding that we have actually seen in the social world to present it in a structure even the practice of writing that thesis was really essential which actually not many bachelor's um, courses offers not even in Nepal especially not in India because in India thesis is only important when you're doing MPhil and PhD so it's very less considered important in masters and bachelors but then this background of thesis writing a thesis coming up with questions formulating it coming up with analysis tools all these things were really helpful for me, especially when I went to JNU and to, you know, do my thesis, do my research, solve my research questions. So that was really essential. And yeah, the third thing I would say is um, the family like uh, place that Nasha College is. Seriously, like you can make many mistakes. You know, I made many mixed mistakes in my college life, but then it, it really keeps you encouraging. It, it's like, you know, you can make a lot of mistakes as much as you want because it's your family and then we are going to support you even the principal chairman they're always you know welcome and they're they're always friendly so we never felt like we're in an institution where there is an authoritative structure but we also felt more you know close you know we can uh, explore this um this course together explore our own potentials together with the help of these uh, faculty so I think National College has really played a very important role I always when I was in JNU I always thought back thank god I was in National College you know all these things I learned this bachelor's thesis I mean it was incredible it really helped me to stand out as a call you know in front of my JNU colleagues because I had a better grip in in these uh this research area even, you know, the courses it offers, like media studies, and um, you even do creative writing. And all these uh, courses actually uh, gives you a package of uh, the things that you need as a researcher, as a social scientist. And I'm focusing more as a researcher because this is the the um, you know the path I paved although you can go to any other field from social sciences but because this is my path so I think that's how National College has helped me and and I'm really lucky to be a part of it I would say that thank you so one of the best one of the many best things about National College is that it provides us with the opportunity of organizing programs and being a part of uh, every event. So uh, 
in our conversation, you mentioned that uh, you were one of you were almost the first batch to conduct graduate of the month. So, how do you feel being on the other side? Right, that's exactly. You know, it feels really different. We all, you know, the when we were in National College, it was an atmosphere. It's like a social consciousness that all the students in National College had. That you know, everyone should participate as much as possible. Be active, participate, talk with people, do projects, everything. So, as we had everything that in our mind, and I, as I was thinking that I should participate more and more, and there was this new initiative, Graduate of the Month, that started in our our tenure, our, our batch. So I thought, why not? Why not start with this graduate of the month? So we did really, you know, worked in a team and uh, we tried to do the graduate of the month. And now I'm sitting here as a graduate, I'm, you know, itself. It really feels like it was just yesterday I was doing all those projects and I'm back like this. So it feels really different, but it feels also proud that I'm back as an alumni and I can really talk about my college and all the things that it has given to me. And, you know, it was not, it, it it never was like this, like offline. It used to be, I mean, online, it used to be offline. We used to be there uh, together in a teamwork. We used to think about the person who is going to come as a graduate in our program. And then, when we, you know, like you guys did, you, you, you used to, you know, briefly know about this, this person. And then based on their personality trait or maybe, you know, the, what, the, what they have actually done in their career. So you come up with a theme caller, let's say. And we used to come up with a theme caller and you know decorate the entire seminar hall with that theme color and invite them and listen to their uh, experiences of how uh, they pursued their careers and you know how th those courses how they address those courses and what they learn from those courses and how can we better learn from their mistakes so that was really um, really a good start of the graduate of the month and it has reached so far now and I'm, as, uh, I'm a part of it so it really feels really good. And yeah, I think it's really important, you know, for all of us to be active and participate in different activities. It's not just about doing activities for the sake of doing or for certificates, but it is also about meeting people because our field is as such that we need to meet as many people as possible for us to understand their problems, their life, their social realities. This is actually our field. So why not be a part of this field, explore this field and, you know, communicate more with people and be active to all these uh, all these you know projects and initiatives because national college is an institution that will you know if you have a uh, idea and initiative about something so they they will provide um the the resources they'll say that like now you go ahead with this because they will just pat on your back and say okay you know good luck you should really execute it so that is really important and that i really flatter about uh, national college yeah and i'm so glad to be here <laughs> as a graduate so now i'd like to call on briksha to ask you more interesting questions <laughs> go ahead thank you aditi now thank you so much for the answers and it, it was interesting it's getting really interesting now to know more about you i have a question so we actually know you through a lecture that you had given us a few weeks ago on the topic inequality of, uh, sorry, digital inequality. I think, yeah, so there's some technical errors. Yeah, first of all, uh, yeah, we know you through a lecture that was on the topic digital inequality. And first of all, on behalf of everyone from my class, I would like to thank you for an amazing and insightful session i'm sure everyone enjoyed it and i didn't even know about that i didn't know about digital inequality now i actually have some knowledge about that thank you so much for that but uh, thank you so much and now also if i'm not mistaken you want to pursue your phd in that topic uh, in, uh, digital inequality in south asia so what inspired you to uh, conduct research what inspired you to, inspired you to research in that topic for your thesis so can you please share it with the audience 
Sure, sure. Thank you so much that you enjoyed my lecture last time that I presented. It wasn't so interesting, but then it was a few findings that I got from my thesis. And uh, yeah, so the idea actually came from my internship. So again, the credit goes to National College because they had this internship program and then I needed to go to an organization and do an internship. So I did my internship in Martin Chotari. And during my internship, there were projects going on in different branches of a research area. So one of the research area was ICT and they were doing their research on how, you know, ICT uh, is uh, being adopted in local people's life, how they use it and how some people are deprived of the ICT use and the benefit of, so for, for instance, mobile phone, internet, all these things. So they had done a project and they had also written a policy brief on it. So I really got interested in that topic back then. But then when I went to JNU, so um, the climate was more serious about this inequality because this corona struck, right? So I was in JNU and it was a lockdown. We all had online classes. And then there were issues with uh, the many students who couldn't join the online classes. And I thought that this is the right time for me to really think about this dish inequality as an issue in the social world right now. And uh, what interested me more was the fact that it should be researched more in South Asia because so far, you know, the initial phase of ICT started in Western world. It now even the information age began decades ago, 10, you know, decades ago. But then but then they never had a research about this inequality from a sociological and anthropological perspective. Had they done that, we would have actually uh, come up with better ideas to solve these inequalities. And the problem was there that, you know, these uh, area of digital inequality was more addressed by media studies. So I thought that if they have missed out, and in South Asia, especially in countries like Bangladesh, Nepal, India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, in these countries where now ICT penetration is increasing day by day, especially due to corona and globalization and people's migration. So due to all these factors and the high time initial phase of this digital inequality being penet penetrating again and again in these communities. So I felt that is the right time for me to really address this question because there is a uh, academic gap no, of knowledge in this area. So I thought to do that. And um, my friends supported from Bangladesh and Afghanistan to do this research. So there was this research uh, from Nepal, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. So I wanted to really start with inquiring into the digital skills to really know the digital inequality. And now how do you know about this inequality? Uh, you will start to know about it if there is any, you know, in uh, differentiation in uh, different factors, like for example, maybe based on gender or maybe based on your caste or class group, or maybe based on, you know, uh, the subjects you take. So I thought the university would be the right place to start with to really explore this kind of digital inequality if it is, uh, or if, if it is coming up as a new form of inequality. So all these things really, this gap in knowledge really made me interested in this area, which I really am passionate about. And especially so for us, like sociologists and anthropologists us like us, who can actually do an ethnographic study by going to the field, knowing how these local farmers or maybe some silk weavers come across this new technology and then how they use it, how they evolve in their daily lives. So come up with, to come up with these ideas, I think it is very important and for all of us and then that's why I want to pursue this so yeah it was the situation the political social uh, economic situation and also my uh, insight from uh, internship that I got idea for this thank you so much I wish you the best for everything ahead of this I mean I didn't know about this a uh, few weeks ago, until a few, few weeks ago, and now I have some ideas about it. It was really insightful. Thank you so much. And I'm, pre I'm sure many of my classmates share the same, uh, say, same experience regarding this digital inequality. So now I think our segment is getting a little intense because of the course and academics uh, more more about academics and courses maybe i think we can move on to a more fun segment i hope you're ready for this so this is rapid fire questions rapid okay. fire questions segment and so i hope i think you know the rules and you're not allowed to think for more than a second or something so That's you're not lot. allowed to think for a long time it's just impromptu okay. answers so are you ready 
can I shoot my questions to you? Oh, go for it. <laughs> so, what would you consider to be your spirit animal? I would say horse. Okay, early bird or a night owl? Early bird. Early what early advice? Post. Okay. What advice would you give to your younger self? Yeah, I think uh, be more invested on one thing and not jump about a lot of things. Just be more focused on one thing. Is, I think this is useful to every one of us. <laughs> so, what would be the title of your autobiography? Um, maybe discovering yourself, if that, that is. is <laughs> what is the weirdest thing you have ever eaten? No, that. That I, I really can't say anything. I mean, I have only eaten, eaten good food, so <laughs> nothing. You can't that. relate with this question. No, nothing. Uh, educational, educational trip or fun casual trips? I think I know the answer. Oh, I do it is. <laughs> is it fun casual trips? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, no way. I mean, we do the education all the time. But yeah, in fun casual trips, we can have the lens of sociologists that is there, but then fun casual trip that is. <laughs> exactly. Which season would you describe your love life as? Okay. So I think everyone would go with spring. So spring. Some more flowers. Okay. What would you... I think. What would your title song be? So title song, if I remember, yeah, three three little things by Jason Mars. That was really good. That That's I really nice. That's really nice. <laughs> if you could live anywhere in the world, where would that be? Nepal. Definitely. <laughs> really nice. If you could learn a new skill, what would it be? Yeah, I would say Kathak because I'm interested in dance and I love Kathak. So I want to really furnish my skill on it. Yeah, let's say it. that. <laughs> what scares you or what's your pet peeve? Yeah, I, I'm I'm scared of hospitals, actually. Hospitals? Yeah, I, That's... I hate hospitals and I hate doctors and I hate all this medical, you know, I, I hate that. Yeah, that I'm scared okay. of. That's something different, actually. Safari <laughs> or trekking? Trekking, definitely. Okay, are you a cat person or a dog person? Definitely cat person. I had this small kitten uh, with, you know, I was looking after this small kitten in my JNU hostel. So definitely cat person. That's lovely. When have you felt your biggest adrenaline rush? Um, so thriller, uh, it was, um, ghost thriller. It was exorcist. If you guys have watched it series, right? That was, that was, if I remember nothing else, no. just the series, the series. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the end, last question. And that was really fun. I hope you oh. had fun as well. And I, I hope our audiences enjoyed that as well. Now coming back to the same intense part, uh, <laughs> I, I want to, uh, I would want to pass over this mic to Aditi for more intense and interesting questions. I over have to you, Aditi. For audience, do you guys have any rapid questions that you want to fire to the guest? <laughs> fire it. Fire it. Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your favorite teacher in National College? Oh, that's that. That would be fast. I am sorry. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> If you guys have, you know, studied under him. They have not yet, but very soon they are in first year now. Oh, look look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Do you guys have any questions you want to ask? One questions, you'll get to answer. You'll get to ask her questions about the course later. Okay. Nobody. Only Pradyat Raj Pandey. That's good. Okay. He's our friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just remember I think he was the one be questioning a lot in the last lecture as well. Yes, thank you. He was. <laughs> so, uh, now, coming into one of the very interesting questions I want to ask you is that 
we will be going to our trip soon. So I want to know your experience on field trips and the relationships um, that you made, the interaction that you did with the communities. How has that helped you? And oh, like, how is it started? Uh, like the first experience you had and the most recent experience you have, like what are the things that have in common or what have you learned? And that'll be it. Okay, that's a lot of question. But yeah, the common thing is field trip. So I'll, I'll say on that. So yeah, I've said it before as well. Field trip is very important. It's like uh, for medical students, uh, their field is different. Our field is the social world. And uh, not only in the field trips, even wherever we go, even in our interactions and parties or whatever. So being a sociologist, we always have these questions in our mind and we go about like that. And National College, when it offered a field trip specifically uh, for every semester, and uh, it was always related to a course. So whenever you do a course and you study a lot of theories about it, and then you go to a field and you didn't really actually try to implement those theory. So that was really important part, I think, from National College, which you can actually learn. And also, I would say that if you really seriously, you take your future very seriously and go about, uh, you know, exploring the tools that you can use, exploring the ways you can ask certain questions to these communities, how you can build some rapport with the, with these people, how you can actually talk, start talking with a stranger and talk in such a way that, you know, you are being an observer and then the person is actually the uh, person you're observing and how you can actually extract these um, social facts from them, knowledge from them and, you know, answer your research question. So it was very essential, especially to, you know, it could practically use our knowledge, theoretical knowledge by going to the grassroots. And now it is useful by two ways. So first it is because you will actually understand the grassroots problems, which have only read in theories, but it might be very limited. But when you go to the grassroots level, you have uh, to be familiar to real ex life experiences. For example, if there is a caste inequality and people have to suffer a lot of humiliation, discrimination in their jobs or maybe education, then you will see more intense and complex realities, which we think is very simple based on theories. So to learn and to have more better advanced knowledge about the grassroots, not only by sitting and by being an armchairist and thinking about something, but actually going there was really important for us to get that, you know, social insights about the reality. So that is one part. Another is being a researcher. Um, it is really important for us to learn the research skills. So the first and foremost research skill you need to have is to be a good observer. You know, when you have to, you, you go to a field, sometimes when we walk out of our house, we don't really care much about the poster hanging out there or the flowers, uh, you know, crushing on the ground or maybe, you know, some someone opening the door or some uh, in, in, in a house, the windows are all closed. So all these small details, we never notice it. We're just thinking about something and we just walk around. But social, you know, social science field trip is such a thing where you actually have to go observe every little things like the movement or gesture of someone or maybe what kind kind of tea or how how in what glass is one having what kind of shop is that and what kind of dress someone is wearing how how is he or she speaking all these small details where the poster is is it in a more urban area or is it in a more rural area or you know if someone is in a you know, in a better off house or someone is, you know, just in us lying in a hut or, you know, working something, all these small details, you need to observe it. And this observation gets better and better with more practices. So it's not that I went to master's and then I have to do my field so, and then I become perfect in that. No, it doesn't work like that. So what National College really offered was a future from the beginning. So when you do field trip from the beginning, you have developed, you have to develop this observation skill more effectively, more better. So you will be seeing more better reality. You will not be ignoring something as ignorant. You will consider all each and every factor that can be essential for your research question to be addressed. So for this thing, I think I think field trip is uh, very important for social scientists, uh, for social scholars, like the ones we are going to be in our near future. So that I think is uh, very essential. And thank you, sir. <laughs>
anything. I think, uh, thank you so much for your uh, insights. I think now finally we are, our prayers are getting answered so we can experience that ourselves. We're going yes. to field trips coming week or some, uh, after a week or so. So finally our prayers are being answered, like I said again. Thank you so much for your answers. Now, uh, moving on, we have the last question for this session today. And uh, so... Like we had shared, uh, we had shared in uh, communication earlier, some di- some day earlier, that again you had mentioned earlier as well that you were you consider yourself lucky that you got into into this field, into this course. Choosing bachelor's of social science says was one of your best decisions, and I shared the same equation with you. But uh, but now we know that we have been in that place as well. But choosing an undergraduate course is really tough it's one of the toughest decisions in our life now uh, we are lucky enough that we got in a good we got uh, in good courses and we are we enjoyed this we are enjoying this as well but what kind of uh, advices or recommendations do you give to our audience who probably might be a plus to graduates or uh, approaching towards their graduation of high school. So what kind of advices or recommendations would you give them? Because all we hear right now, uh, we've been there as well. So after plus two, we go to family gatherings and all they say is, oh, okay, for me. And that, <laughs> that pressures a lot. So what kind of uh, recommendations and uh, advices would you give? Um, so I would start like this um, because, you know, it, it was very important for me to be curious about what I'm learning. So, you know, before my uh, schooling, I was like really a very average student, really not interested in studies because, you know, at the point of time, you were study- focusing more on grades and everything. But then when I started to study A-levels and then, you know, I had curiosity about knowing something and that curiosity about was about, you know, knowing the sociology as a discipline and, you know, how to really see the world around me so that was my curiosity and my curiosity brought me to this course I would say because when I saw these courses I felt like it was not about what I'm what I'm going to become by studying these courses it was about what I'm going to learn from it so the curiosity was the was the thing that was there so I believe that anyone who is actually looking for a courses it should sprung from your curiosity and not from the pressure to be something and someone in your near future because I believe even if you choose uh, maybe a discipline like social science or med- medicine or physics whatever you go with if you have the curiosity if you have the passion to it at the end of the day you will be creating your own scope and especially for those students in Nepal who are curious to learn about so- social reality cultural reality political situations trying to see analytically and you know critically about the world around them you know about these social patterns behavior patterns we uh, evident witness day by day so all these things if someone is interested in you know someone have the social questions like the you know medical question someone has is how is this working why why this digital inequality why someone has better skill than others so if you have these questions and if you are really interested in social sciences and uh, not social science not only as sociology but every single lenses in that social science, like politics, like geography, like media. So, you know, trying to have all the overall uh, view so that you can really understand the world better because the sociology is not as easy as you would think. It's like a lot of books and a lot of discipline to bring together and really answer that question. So if you have that questions, then I think Bachelors of Social Science is a really good course offered. And it is good in a way that it is structured. So it, it is structured that it, it provides a basic understanding of sociology and anthropology first. So you are just introduced slowly and gradually to this, this disciplinary world. And then you try to break those disciplinary boundaries. And then you try to read all the discipline that, that can be helpful for you to come up with the new questions. And then, you know, find a new answer to it, become a researcher, project manager, whatever it is. But then it, it, it gives you a wide knowledge which a social science needs. Even, you know, a politician who should do a good politics needs this kind of wide knowledge. So I think that 
is the best uh, Nasha College could offer. And I believe that these courses, this batches of social science course, not only Nasha College, but even other colleges, even in Nepal, even the branches of Nasha College in rural area should be there because it's really a good course to start with. And even in, although the academic field, especially for social science students, is sometimes, you know, very limited, the research atmosphere might not be so pure in Nepal. But then if we produce and reproduce social scientists by using these disciplines in the future, so there is a very good potential that we'll be creating a really good think tank, social think tank, social research centers, as a student, as a graduate ourselves. So anyone in, interested, whoever thinks that there is a curiosity to really do something in the social field and whatever it be, be it a research, be it a project management, be it, you know, activism, be it protest, all these things, if you're interested, then I think a Bachelor of Social Science is a complete package and one should go ahead with it. That's what I would say. And please, please select this course. I'm really impressed. And I really want to, you know, give a lot to this course myself. I actually agree with you as well because it's just been second semester and I can, I feel that I have learned a lot. My perspectives have changed a lot. So I agree with you in so many terms. I mean, this is totally a life-changing course. I, 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 can, I consider that a life-changing course. So thank you so much. It's, it's almost an end. So thank you so much. It was absolutely a delight to hear from you. Hearing such insightful and amazing journeys and your experiences was surely a treat to the ears and mind. I enjoyed every second of this session from the very beginning. And every second was as productive. We had a productive evening. I'm pretty sure everyone had a productive evening. So now, sadly, we are at the end of the event and we have been together for almost an hour. Uh, I cherish, I thoroughly cherish every second of this event. Thank you so much for your time and effort. Thank you so much for your valuable time and inputs. Uh, shout out to our amazing, uh, shout out to my amazing co-host, co uh, Aditi, and people who have worked behind the scene to make this event a successful event. And every audiences who are uh, who have stayed until now and listened to our guest speaker, amazing uh, views and inputs. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you had a, an amazing time and I hope you have some significant takeaways as well. Now it is time for us to sign up. Thank you once again, everyone. Thank you for your time. If there's anything Binesh or, or Principal Sir would like to uh, say for uh, before we end, before we wrap up, please, the floor is open. Thank you. This is this much. Uh, this is it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Anusma, for being Thanks. with us. Thank you, host. Uh, Aditi and uh, Briksha, and thank you all for your valuable participation. So let's in. We'll follow more on this. Thank you all. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Bye bye.